Hey guys, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going to actually go through the gold trim that I'm doing on my Titan, the Warlord Titan I've been painting recently. I did say originally I wasn't going to go through the gold trim but actually there's quite a number of steps that I'm going through to give this kind of an aged and worn effect. And in this tutorial I'm going to show you exactly how I go about it. So let's get straight into the video. So here we go then guys, this is the guide. So I've got my uh, component that I'm going to be doing here, which is quite the large sort of ankly toe piston section from the Warlord Titan. I've already done the blue work on this, this is all about the trim. So I've got a number of paints that I'm going to be using. Now there are two options for the base coat. One is using a tin, so I've got tinny tin there, and one is brass, and I've got brassy brass. I'm actually going to be using the brass for this. The next is the magical no skill talent uh, liquid, which is Agrax Earthshade. Then I've got Vallejo Liquid Gold. Now this is almost like a polishing kind of gold than it is a paint gold. Then we have Reichland Flesh Shade. Then we have some uh, black paint. So I've just got a standard bit of black there from Vallejo, but any Games Workshop, whatever. Then I've got Games Workshop's uh, Magical Retributor Armor Gold. And then optionally, uh, Chainmail Silver. I'm not actually going to use the Chainmail Silver for this, but uh, feel free to do so to add that extra bit of effect at the very end. The first thing we need to do then is to paint all of the trim in a brassy brass or if you're going to go a slightly darker version then you would start with tinny tin. So I'm just going to thin this down a little bit and then I'm just going to apply that to all the trim. Now I'm not going to show you every single section of this because all you've got to do is go around the component that you're doing and then just paint that in the relevant uh, relevant colour, in this case brass. So I'm using a, I think it's a one brush for this. Uh, but obviously you need to adjust your brush size depending on the size of the component you're painting. So I'm just going to go around, there's quite a lot of uh, thick trim on this as you can see just from that bottom panel already. There are some grooves in this as well so I'm going to lightly brush over the top of those to ensure that the black uh, prime sits in the, uh, in the recess there. So that will be not painted, that will just sit as a natural shade. But all we've got to do is just go around the entire model, uh, or the entire component in this case, and paint that in a brass, and that's exactly what I've got here. Now, I'm not going to paint too much of the details on the underside, because you literally cannot see any of it once it's been stuck to the model. Once that's all dry, though, the next thing we need to do is that magical paint, or the magical uh, shade that is Agrax Earthshade. I'm going to go over the entire brass section with this colour, uh, and then uh, leave that to dry, pretty much. And then once we're done with that, we can move on to the actual gold. Now, as I said at the start of the video, this is liquid gold. This is slightly different uh, paint than you're used to. This is actually a, a paint that actually is made from a synthetic resin and metallic pigment. So very different to your typical acrylic. And you need to thin it with alcohol if you're going to do that. And you need to wash your brushes in a, an alcohol solvent like uh, White Spirit. But I'm going to be going pretty neat with this. And we're going to be kind of dry brushing but kind of using well, it's difficult to see i'm going to show you on the video here that i'm going to it's a little bit of a dry brush but i'm actually going to use some of the flat side of the dry brush to almost like polish it on as you can see i'm doing there and all that does is sort of buff up this uh, this pigment that's within this type of paint and then gives it a really good polished shine uh, you can see that coming clearly there if you look at the comparison between the, the brass that's been uh, washed with Agrax Earthshade and the bit that I'm now polishing up. When we get to the rivets, I kind of dry brush over that a little bit so you still get that shade still caught around some of those recesses. And this is the end result. It dries very, very quickly, providing you haven't diluted it. And even if it's not 100% coverage over the, uh, over the previous base coat, that actually works to act in favour for this aged effect. But you can see there, it's looking pretty damn shiny. If you wanted a brand super spanking shiny gold thing, uh, this might be the stage that you kind of leave it at. But we're going to be aging this up, and uh, Reichland Flesh Shade over gold is absolutely magical for this, uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And there's two stages to this. The first is a pure uh, Reichland Flesh Shade wash all over this gold, and that really does, in my opinion, make gold look a bit more, a bit more realistic. So not super slapping it on, just pushing that paint around, especially around the recesses uh, and around those rivets uh, to give that uh, sort of slightly tarnished gold look. But as I said, if you really wanted that super high polish, then you just leave it as is. 
and maybe specifically target this particular wash just around those rivets. But as this tutorial is about the more aged gold, then uh, we're just going to follow this through and just go over this with all of that uh, shade. And then once we're done, this is the effect. It doesn't look great when you're applying it, but once it dries, uh, you, you can kind of see the effect here. It's really toned it down, taken that shine off of the gold uh, and just applied that sort of first filter over the top of it to make it look a bit more dated. Now we're going to rinse and repeat that process, but we're going to add a little bit of black this time. So this will darken down that shade and when that goes around all the rivets and so on it really does begin to make it look that much older. So let me just move my paint up into the camera so you can see the sort of ratio that I'm going for. So I'm going to get quite a, quite a lot of this uh, uh, Reichland Flesh Shade on my uh, painting palette here and then I'm going to add the smallest amount of black. It's really really tiny so I'm going to apply that separately so I've got control over how much I'm going to put in. And I'll take sort of about half of it there, is that enough? But you can see immediately how it darkens down. I'm going to take a little bit more there, but you can see that immediate tone change uh, to the original colour, which I'll just uh, get a bit of original colour just so you can see the, the shade difference. You can see how bright that is compared to that dark pool that we've created with just a tiny amount of black paint. So you can experiment with that. You can change the tone of that with a bit more black if you really wanted to, but this is good enough for me. So we're going to repeat that process we did, and we're just going to go all over the... Uh, the gold slash brass slash uh, Reichland flesh shade trim uh, and this will really darken down especially around the rivets and uh, it will kind of leave you know it would it would change the tone again of the gold into something that bit more old uh, so we're just going to go around the rest of the model uh, and uh, tidy up all that bit of trim and we're pretty much done on the uh, on the shade parts so just the final couple of bits of uh, demonstration on here but we're just going to go around the rest of the model and when we come back this is what we end up with so this is actually a little bit wet at the moment uh, but uh, we'll come back to a second one that's fully dried and you'll see how darkened around those rivets and so on this particular colour has gone so uh, we'll take a look now that that's dried that's taken about an hour I think it took to dry so uh, just a little bit just to make sure that it's fully dry because the last thing you want to do is get any of it on your thumbs and your fingers and then start spreading that around and then you end up with a mess. The next stage then is to uh, brighten this up just on the uh, on the edges. I'm going to take some of uh, Games Workshop's uh, Retributor armor straight from the pot. I'm going to thin that down a little bit and then we're going to edge highlight every little bit of this gold trim. This will begin to sort of make that gold pop a little bit even though it's sort of aged and so on. I still want it to look like uh, you know a typical Games Workshop style model so we've got to edge highlight all of those edges because uh, that's what you do with edge highlighting, you highlight the edges. Uh, let's uh, ignore that. Uh, let's uh, just go around and we're going to use the flat side of the paintbrush. I'm using, I think I'm using, which which brush am I using for this? I'm using a 2 slash 0 brush for this because that was the one that was handy. But you just go around and on the inside and the outside of that entire piece I've just edge highlighted quite carefully, as carefully as I can be, with that gold edge uh, paint. Now you can take this one further step, which I'm not actually gonna do on this tutorial because this was the final step that I wanted it to take to, but if you really wanted to go a little bit further, you could add a bit of uh, chainmail or gunmetal silver onto sort of the, the, the higher points or the, the real extreme edges in the corners, just to give it that little bit more of a, uh, a blingy pop, but I'm gonna stick with it there. And as you can see, I've done two more of those toes, and just as an example on a larger piece here, I've actually done it on this large uh, Warlord Titan thigh guard. So uh, you can see that the technique is applicable to pretty much all of the surfaces I've done here. So there we go then guys, that is the gold trim finished, or the tutorial finished. I've got a lot of gold trim going on in this thing, and this is just the legs so far. So I've got all the weapon trim, all the shoulder and body trim, everything else is going to be exactly the same style. Um, but I'd love to know in the comments section what you think. Do you think this is... Uh, a good method of doing it, have you got an alternative? Uh, and what do you think of the particular product that I'm using, which is the liquid gold stuff from Vallejo, which is more like a, a buffing polish than it is a, a standard gold paint. Uh, but I've been using that for a while now, it's actually nearly run out. Um, but this exact same technique you can use with their equivalent in silver as well. So if you wanted to go for a more steel type finish, uh, or a more platinum style finish, then I'd definitely recommend using that. 
but thank you very much for watching. Hope you learned something new. And if you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I shall catch you guys on the next video.